Here at the Cincinnati Nature Center, we've created a colorful bee hotel to support native pollinators and to teach visitors about their importance. But creating a home for native bees is something you can easily do at home as well, whether you have a large backyard, a postage stamp, or even just a porch. This video will help you get started raising one type of native bee, mason bees, in your outdoor space. Mason bees emerge in the spring and they are excellent pollinators. Not only will they improve pollinator diversity, they can help your garden and trees, and you'll get a first-hand look at their fascinating life cycle. Raising mason bees does not require extensive knowledge or equipment. Unlike social honeybees, which live in a hive, mason bees are solitary. This means that they nest alone and that every female is her own queen. They don't produce honey because they don't need to store food for a large colony. And because they don't have a hive to protect, they're quite gentle. Males don't have stingers at all, and females are unlikely to sting. And if they do, it's much less painful than a honeybee sting. This means no bee suits necessary. Mason bees got their name because they use mud for protection in their nesting tubes, much as a mason would use mortar. If we could look inside one of their nesting holes or tubes, we'd see a pattern like this. The female bee would first collect mud to build a protective wall. She would then collect pollen and nectar to put in the tube before laying her egg and sealing it off with more protective mud. She'll repeat this process until she fills two to three tubes. Inside the tube, the eggs will hatch into larvae, which will eat the food and then spin a cocoon. They'll overwinter in this cocoon until the following spring when they emerge as fully grown bees. To give mason bees everything that they'll need in your space, you'll want to have a few things nearby. First, they'll need mud, and clayish mud is preferred. You can even create a mud zone in your space so that the bees can access various layers of soil. You'll also want flowering plants within about 300 feet of your bee house. If it's possible in your space, plant spring blooming native flowers and let those dandelions grow. Not only will they break up the soil, but they're a food source for mason bees. Mason bee houses come in many different forms. You can buy one ready-made, you can build one yourself, or you can even upcycle one using household materials. In any case, there are a few things that your bee house will need. It will need to provide some protection from the elements. For example, on this house that we built, there's a roof with a small overhang to keep rain off. It will also need to be mounted somewhere sturdy, such as a post or wall, so it will not get knocked around in the wind. If you can, mount your house on a south or southeast facing surface, where it will get morning sun and evening shade. Optionally, you can provide a screen to protect the nesting tube from larger predators. Keeping the nest up off the ground can also improve protection for your bees. We like putting ours around eye level so we can look inside. Since mason bees emerge in spring, you'll want to put your house up in March or April, depending on your location. A good rule of thumb is that your house should be ready when the dandelion flowers appear. You'll also need nesting tubes, which can easily be purchased online or in our nature shop. Different bee species nest in different sized tubes, so be sure to get the correct size for mason bees. Nesting tubes can be cardboard or natural reed. You can also purchase tube liners to extend the life of your cardboard tubes, as tubes and liners will need to get replaced each year to prevent disease. Make sure your house can accommodate the length of a tube comfortably. If the tube or nesting hole is too short, it can prevent the propagation of female bees. Female mason bees will continue filling nesting tubes throughout the spring. When the tubes are capped with mud, usually in early summer, you have the option of putting them into a protective mesh bag to keep them away from predators such as parasitic wasps. Then, in the fall, the next bit of fun begins. We'll be covering this in a part two video when it's time to harvest cocoons and unwrap the nesting tubes. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to subscribe to our channel to get more information about native bees and other fun nature topics.